Southwest Airways uh, jetliner landed uh, uh, in the Hudson River and the time you managed to get out of your seats and then get to an exit? Well, we, we, uh, we hit the, uh, the river and uh, it was quite an impact. Uh, the plane stayed together. Uh, probably a lot of folks were worried it might split up, but it didn't. And um, it was sort of an angle with the nose kind of sticking out. And uh, people were very orderly. There wasn't uh, really a lot of panic. And uh, we made it out the exit doors onto the wings. Uh, and then people were trying to make their way to the, to the rafts that were extending from the plane's fuselage. Uh, a few people went in the water, but I think they all got out. And uh, we just were really looking uh, for the boats at that point and helicopters. Um, you know, obviously, if you're going to crash a plane, it, Hudson River is a good place to do it. Yeah, a lot of uh, ferries, a lot of boats in the area. What was it like uh, when, when, we, when he said prepare for impact? Did everyone brace? So what did you do to prepare for impact? Uh, well, I think uh, a lot of people started praying and really just just collecting themselves. Uh, it was quite stunning. Um, there, we knew there wasn't a lot of time because we were quite close to the ground uh, at that point, and we, we could tell that the descent was uh, was somewhat rapid. So I think people were very quiet, and uh, really we weren't sure if uh, they were trying to make it for the runway or the river, but right after he said prepare for impact, it was pretty evident that we weren't going to make a runway. Uh, I think that's when uh, folks were, you know, obviously the intensity uh, heated up quite a bit at that moment. Well, when you hit the water of the Hudson River, was it a relatively smooth hit or was it a, was it a pounding? Uh, what was that like? Uh, it was, a, a re it was a, I, well, it's hard to describe and compare it because it's uh, the first time I've been through it, but it, it was, I think, uh, pretty intense. It, it, it didn't last long, um, but the, the river is very, very smooth. Uh, the pilot extended the flaps. I, I don't know if he put the gear down or not, but I tell you, it's just a great landing. I really, uh, I was really expecting the plane would careen uh, or flip over or break apart, and uh, it, that obviously didn't happen. Um, and uh, I did kind of, kind of jockey back and forth, and at that, you know, we weren't really sure how long that was going to last. It seemed like uh, it lasted for an eternity. Uh, but then we were all making our way off the plane, and that was a relieving moment. Did it, uh, did it feel like birds or a bird uh, was sucked into that one of the engines that caused this? Because that's the preliminary indication we're getting from the FAA. Um, it, it, I did not see that or witness that, and I was probably in a position to, as I was literally right behind the left wing and, and very close to the, obviously, at the window seat. I didn't see or hear anything. I did hear the engine uh, sort of flame out. It, it looked like. It was either on fire or smoke was coming from it. Uh, you could smell the smoke. Um, it wasn't clear if the right engine was functioning or not. Uh, you, were, you were on the left but, side. Uh, you were on the left side of the plane, and you could see that engine where there was smoke and some fire. But you, could you see the other engine as well? Uh, no, I know. I just I think, as far as I know, just the left engine was uh, was was having trouble. Um, um, so I don't know what really is the story with the right engine. And, and when you were taking off from uh, LaGuardia, uh, I don't know if you know if you were taking off to the west, the east, or which direction you were actually heading. Do you have any idea? Uh, no, I, I don't, Wolf, actually. Um, I know I know we were heading to Charlotte, which was home, but I don't know which direction that we were actually flying. Yeah. Yeah, we're showing uh, pictures, uh, a picture right now, a still photo from the Associated Press, uh, uh, Fred, uh, of uh, folks on uh, standing on the wings uh, after they've escaped from this aircraft, uh, and they're clearly waiting for a boat to come rescue them. Uh, I assume you were you were one of those one of those folks. Uh, yeah, I was I was uh, standing on the left wing for a little while, and then it was evident that the rafts on the left side of the plane were filling up, so. I actually. Yeah, uh, we have, we're also showing. Uh, with, Fred, hold on a second. I want to tell our viewers what they're seeing. They're seeing passengers uh, getting on some of these boats after they've been rescued, after they got off the aircraft, and now they're being brought. This is videotape courtesy of our affiliate WABC. Uh, they, they get off the, uh, the plane uh, and then they get onto these boats. Uh, but go ahead and, and, and walk us through that, uh, those few m moments that must have been terrifying. Uh, it was. It, it, it was very intense, and uh, 
Um, you know, experience I hope uh, I never, for any, any of us, have to experience again. But um, I'm just grateful to God. I, I think, uh, I don't know for sure, but I think that everyone got off the plane. There were a few injuries, but I think everyone survived, and uh, I think that's miraculous. Uh, our producer, by the way, Mike Allers, uh, has been in touch with sources familiar with what's going on. Uh, one of the sources say uh, the pilot reported a double bird strike. It was unclear, the source said, whether that meant one bird in each of the two engines or two birds in one engine. The pilot said he needed to go back, uh, the source said, and air traffic controllers started to give him clearance to do so. Uh, in other words, uh, it, it, was, uh, it, it was clearly, according to this pilot, at least a bird or a couple of birds or some, uh, so, so maybe even some more that caused this uh, plane to uh, to start to go down. Uh, he said he was trying to go to Teterboro, which is a private uh, airport in New Jersey. Uh, wanted to head there, but it was uh, uh, it, it, he obviously couldn't make it. They had to go into the Hudson River. Uh, who's this? Um, yeah, I, it, I, I don't know if it was a double bird strike, um, um, uh, but it. I always thought uh, that the plane could fly with one engine, so there must have something must have happened to the right engine, and that is the plausible uh, possibility uh, for a double bird strike. Were, was was the plane pretty much full? Uh, did, do you know? Do you remember when you took off if there were uh, any empty seats? I think the plane was mostly full. Uh, I, I don't recall seeing uh, in any in, in, in empty seats. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. The plane was pretty much full, 130 or 140 or maybe uh, close to 150 people on board uh, this uh, U.S. Airways uh, flight uh, 1549. I, I guess the first thing you did uh, when, you, when you got into that building and you found yourself safe and sound with your fellow passengers, Fred, is uh, call up uh, some of your, 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 your family. Is that right? Right. I, I first called my wife, um, and uh, then right after that, my assistant called me, which was, uh, nice. I got a couple other phone calls, people just checking in, um, and uh, we're just gathered here kind of in a waiting area, um, drinking coffee and uh, just trying to warm up. Did you, uh, you see, I, so I take it you got your cell phone out with you, is that right? I'm sorry? Your cell phone managed to survive with you? Uh, yes, uh, I, I think there, I, I think everyone survived. With it, well, with your cell phone, I want to. When you when you got off, you started running towards the exit. Did you have a chance to grab your coats, or you just ran with whatever you had? Uh, no, I don't think anyone was uh, grabbing coats or or, or handbags. Uh, people were really just trying to get off. I um I actually forgot to grab a uh, life jacket or a, a seat cushion, so I, I kind of had to hang out in the plane and, and try to find one. Uh, that was a little bit unnerving. But uh, once I found that, um, I was off. I, I might have been. I think I was one of the last ones off the plane, actually. Where, where you are now, near in this building at 42nd Street in Manhattan, Fred. Uh, I, I, everyone has been brought there. All the passengers who were aboard this flight. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, could you repeat that? I'm, I'm, are all the passengers together with you now uh, in this building uh, near 42nd Street in Manhattan? Yes, I believe all the, they're retaining all the passengers here. And uh, did, has anyone from U.S. Airways or from the government spoken to you about what, what happens next? They're talking to us now, and they're asking us to kind of move down and have a seat. And they'll brief you on what to do next. So I'm, I'm struggling yeah. to uh, apologize. It's hard to kind of hear you right now. No, I understand. All right, well, Fred Beretta. Uh, I'm glad you survived uh, what uh, I've been saying. must have been a really terrifying ordeal. I'm glad you and your fellow passengers, uh, at least it looks like uh, everyone managed to get out safely from this U.S. Airways flight uh, 1549, uh, which uh, was taking off from LaGuardia in New York City, heading towards Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, we're told different numbers, uh, at least 135, uh, maybe 140, 45 people were on board. The plane pretty much full taking off and the uh, preliminary the preliminary information uh, indicating yeah. that a bird or birds uh, got into the engines and there was a smoke and fire and all of a sudden this pilot uh, had to land someplace and landed uh, in the Hudson River uh, those doors were opened very very quickly and everyone on board or at least uh, the initial reports everyone on board managed to get out get onto some boats and uh, we're brought to safety in Manhattan. Uh, Abby Tatton is watching this online. Abby, tell us a little bit about this aircraft. 